Hello, this is Hans van der Quast, Senior Lecturer at IHG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video I'm going to show an alternative method for delineating catchments and streams in uh, QGIS. In a previous video I've shown how to use the Saga tools. In this video I'm going to show how to use the Grass tools. The nice thing about GIS is that with the large set of tools that are available we can reach uh, similar goals through different routes. And especially when using open source GIS, there are many tools available for us. We'll use the same data as in chapter 4 of the book QGIS for Hydrological Applications, that was written by Kurt Menke and myself, and which follows the Saga procedure. Make sure you have started QGIS with the grass tools. I've made a favorites to the folder to the chapter 4 folder of the book. So we have exactly the same data. I kept uh, the outputs of the catchment and the channel, so in the end of this procedure we can compare the results. So I start by uh, dragging the four SRTM 1 arc second DEM tiles to the map canvas, and the start of the procedure is the same. We first have to mosaic these layers. So I go to raster, miscellaneous build virtual raster because we only temporarily need this um, mosaic. So I choose select all. Here we are. Make sure you uncheck this box because only for remote sensing images when we need a map stack we use this then every layer will be put in a separate band. In this case it will be one band which merges spatially these different tiles. All the other things we uh, keep the same, and I save it to a file, and I call this one um, mosaic. So it will be a virtual file .vrt, and there we are. It's mosaic. As good practice, we clean up what we don't need, so we keep this list a bit uh, clean. Then the next step is to uh, reproject and to uh, subset this. I'm going to show another method that in the previous video uh, we didn't use, but uh, it's easy to do those two steps in at once. So in the previous video we uh, did it in two steps. We reprojected using the raster projections uh, warp, and then we uh, did a subset using extraction and clip raster by mask layer. So we can do that in one step. I can uh, first add the bounding box. Here it is. And now I go to DM Mosaic and export, save as. Make sure it's a GeoTIFF that comes out. And the output name will be DM subset. And I change the projection here to uh, zone 32. If you want to search for these um, zones, you do 326 for the northern hemisphere, and then you can browse here all the different uh, zones, check where they are because they are given here on the map. That's a nice uh, trick. So in our case, it's uh, zone 32 north, which I previously used, so it's here in the history. And I'll do OK. And I want to use the extent calculated from the bounding box layer. So there we are. Now it uses the coordinates of the bounding box. Of course it's important that the bounding box has the same projection as your uh, destination projection, the output in this case UTM zone 32 north, otherwise it will not work. And make sure you choose the output resolution. In our case we use 30 meters. Remember that SRTM is one arc second. That's the resolution in degrees, which approximates 30 meters at the equator. It will be a bit less um, at 52 degrees north, but um, it's okay to use the 30 meter resolution. And here we can add the no data value. We will use minus 9999, and that's all, and then we run it. 
and now we have our DEM subset in the right projection as you can see in brackets EPSG 32632 and uh, we still have to change the projection of our project There it is, and now we see that our bounding box is uh, square. We can remove the other one and we see below the bounding box the clipped DM. The next step is to fill, and now we are going to use instead of the Saga tools, we're going to use the grass tools. Nice thing about uh, grass is that it's very well documented. So if you simply Google uh, these different uh, grass tools, and we will use the raster tools here, then uh, you will find a lot of documentation, uh, which is much better documented than uh, the Saga tools, for example. To avoid mistakes, I'm going to remove the DEM mosaic. And if I go now to R fill there, make sure you choose the DEM subset, Keep the default output aspect direction format, which is in fact the flow direction in the grass format. And the only thing we need at this stage is the depressionless DM. So this will be also a geotiff. And I call this one DM filled. And run it. it gives a warning which is uh, not a disaster it will just continue the calculation let's in the meantime look up the documentation of the fill there function on the internet and here you see how the function works and you see that uh, previously with the Saga tools we used the Wang and Liu algorithm but here we use the Jensen and Domingue uh, algorithm, which is explained here. It also uses the D8 algorithm for flow direction. So meanwhile, uh, the algorithm has finished. And uh, we see it here. We filled DEM. The next step in the procedure was to do the Strala order calibration. So we need to uh, delineate the streams uh, using the Strala order and select the right order. But the algorithm uh, our stream order has not been uh, implemented or accessible here through the processing toolbox. So we're going to use the other method um, using the flow accumulation. You can see uh, these different methods also in my uh, theoretical lecture on catchment delineation. So what we do basically is accumulate a unit of water through the whole catchment and then uh, where uh, more uh, volumes of water accumulate, uh, we have to determine what is a river by uh, getting a threshold value. We can do that using the R watershed tool. We remove the um, subset and we use the R watershed. Make sure the um, field is chosen and uh, we use here a threshold uh, maybe of 500 the minimum size of exterior watershed. Let's check in the manual page how this works. So the this is the, the threshold which specifies the minimum size of exterior watershed basin in cells. We put it on uh, 500. If we make it too small then uh, it will cause some uh, errors. It will not be always possible to calculate it. We use the single flow direction uh, because that's also a fair comparison then with uh, the other uh, algorithm from Saga, which uses the single flow uh, direction. You could uh, play around with it and see the effect of using the multiple flow direction. There are all kinds of other options that you can use and uh, try out. Then we're going to save this number of cells that drain through each cell. That's the flow accumulation. So I call this one accumulation. And we're also going to output the drainage direction. In this case, 
that will be uh, the flow direction the diff and I'm not going to output the other ones you can try those if you need those variables but in our case we don't need them you see you can even calculate uh, the topographic wetness index or the stream power so that's basically it and then uh, we run the algorithm give some errors but that's not so uh, relevant for us now because it will still output what we need so here you see the flow direction in the grass uh, definition um, it's important to know how it's uh, encoded so go to uh, to style it using palette unique values and I say uh, classify and here I get all the values the positive and uh, negative values in the file let's check in the manual how these drainage directions are numbered and we see that that's different than uh, the numbering in Saga for example so the drainage direction is eight di uh, directions numbered counterclockwise starting from one northeast direction the value 0 indicates that the cell is a depression area defined by depression implement uh, map and a negative values indicate surface runoff is leaving the boundaries of the current geographic region so the absolute value of these negative cells indicates the direction of flow uh, so we need the absolute values so to calculate the absolute values we can use the raster calculator and uh, what we're going to do is uh, use some condition and to make conditions in the raster calculator um, it's quite easy we can use it as sums of products so here we say if flow direction is less than zero then multiply it with minus one times the value of the flow direction for those cells so then those values will become positive and then we can add uh, the positive condition so when flow direction is larger or equal zero so when those are true then we do times the flow direction because if it's true it's one so it will be one time flow direction so we save it to a new file and then we run it let's check the values and do some styling so it's palleted unique values because these are discrete numbers when I click classify now I find all the unique values there and indeed it's what we want values from 1 to 8 and all positive now we're going to style the flow directions in the same way as we did for the saga tools and as explained in chapter 4 of the book we choose the spectral uh, ramp and we're going to edit the ramp I will make sure that the first color is the same as the last color by using the color picker and then we set the different colors for the stops let's first label these values as if it were the saga flow directions so that will go from uh, north to northwest and then clockwise which is of course different than uh, the grass tools and now we change the values to correspond with the values for grass as we saw in the manual so in this way we reproduced uh, the saga flow direction ramp for uh, grass with the correct values let's remove the flow direction layer with the negative values this is the layer with the flow accumulation and uh, it has quite a huge range of uh, values so what we need to do is to, uh, to check a bit uh, the values of accumulation and we see that here downstream we get uh, very high values and that more upstream it's of course uh, less So we need to determine a threshold value for which we 
can say, okay, that is what we call uh, a river. And uh, in this case, I'm going to use a value of uh, 50,000. But you need to calibrate this using uh, OpenStreetMap, for example. So use raster calculator and I just say if the flow accumulation is uh, larger than 50,000, then I call it a river. So I'll call this one uh, channels. And then I run it. And then I get the channels, and uh, we can uh, zoom to the layer, and I can style this. And we don't need the zeros, and I want to make the ones blue. And I remove the accumulation layer. And I'm going to add OpenStreetMap. And here we can see the result of the flow accumulation. And we determine the threshold based on the smaller streams that we can see upstream and see how well it uh, matches. So we can increase or decrease this threshold value to uh, further follow the river or to less follow it. Okay, the next step that we need to do, the next step that we need to do is extract the streams. So in these grass tools, there's our stream extract. And as an input, we give the filled DEM. And I give here the minimum flow accumulation 50,000 that we have determined in the previous step. The other things I uh, keep as default. And I want the streams as a line. So the output type of the vector should be line. And here I can choose the raster that comes out. Let's call this one streams. And here the same for vector. Save it as a geo package if you want. But we don't need that on because we already have it. Close it, and of course it now resembles what we already had, more or less. And we have the streams in vector format. We can style it. And here we see the streams. Let's try to find now the outlet uh, if we compare the OpenStreetMap with the delineated channel. This is where the Ruhr gets into the to the Maas or the Meuse River. I'm going to take the outlet somewhere there, and it's uh, also good to take that from the pixels, so we can see uh, the area that we need to stay within. So I use our water outlet. Make sure to choose here uh, the flow direction map. And to choose the coordinate of the outlet, so let's choose it somewhere here. And then we can simply run this, and we call this uh, 
catchment grass. And I zoom to the layer, and here is our catchment. Then I can do raster to vector to convert this raster area into a polygon. Let's choose area for the output so it becomes a polygon. And we choose an output name. Save it as a geo package. And let's call it our catchment grass. Save and then we run the algorithm. There it is, in vector format, and I can style it. Let's change the simple fill to an outline. And uh, let's make it blue. And a bit thicker. And uh, yeah, this is basically the result. And what we can do now is uh, compare it with the Saga one. So we have here from Saga the catchment shape file. And we have the channels. And uh, let's compare them. So first the catchment, I'll give it a red fill. And we see it matches quite nicely. There are some little deviations. But overall it results in a very similar catchment boundary. And let's do the same for the streams. And we see that that also matches quite nicely, it depends a bit on the threshold for Strahler and for the flow accumulation. But we can see that in general it follows uh, quite clearly uh, the same pattern as the OpenStreetMap if we are upstream and where it gets more uh, human affected downstream and uh, there's deviations but uh, both methods give very similar results. So I hope this was useful for you and uh, you've learned that you can use different tools available in QGIS to uh, achieve similar results and that you can start playing around with the different settings of those tools and see which works best for your catchment.